Web accessibility is the practice of making websites that can be used by people of all abilities and disabilities. In this video, you'll get a brief introduction to the topic. You may have heard of accessibility in the past, or maybe you heard somewhere that your website should be accessible. But what does that even mean? The idea of anyone being able to use a website sounds simple enough, but it's more nuanced than that. There are lots of people in the world, and many considerations to be made. In general, though, there is one guiding principle that should make accessibility a lot easier for anyone to understand. Web standards and best practices tend to lead towards more accessible websites, and in turn, designing a website to be accessible has a tendency to lead you towards web standards and best practices. For example, Screen reading software that assists users with visual impairments can sometimes have difficulty when tables are used for layout rather than being used for tabular data. There are many different types of impairments that encompass vision, hearing, motor skills, and more. In upcoming videos, we'll look at specific techniques to accommodate all types of users. But before we get into the technical details, let's back up for a second, because sometimes web developers and designers wonder why they should be concerned with accessibility at all. There are numerous reasons, but here are the top three. First, and most importantly, it's just the right thing to do. The web represents a giant leap forward in the quality of life for people that live with disabilities. For example, before the advent of online news and screen readers, it was difficult, expensive, and sometimes impossible for a person with visual impairments to read a daily newspaper on their own. That alone should be reason enough. Second, as I mentioned earlier, building accessible websites has a tendency to lead towards HTML markup that is semantic and easy for everyone, even computers, to understand and interpret. Every designer and developer should be able to understand and relate to the importance of this. Lastly, you can get in trouble legally if you're not careful. Many countries have laws that require government agencies, along with public and private organizations, to maintain web content that is accessible to people of all abilities and disabilities. In the year 2000, a blind Australian man engaged in a court case against the Sydney Organizing Committee of the Olympic Games, and he won because under the Australian Disability Discrimination Act of 1992, the official website of the Sydney Olympic Games failed to provide adequate accessibility to blind users. Legal disputes of this nature can be extremely costly, but they're so easily avoidable by simply providing accessible content. The World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C for short, is an organization that sets the rules for HTML and CSS and many other standards. A W3C project known as the Web Accessibility Initiative, or WAI, published the first version of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines in 1999. Since then, and especially in recent years, it has been accepted as the gold standard for creating accessible websites. By the end of 2008, the WCAG 2.0 had been released as a recommendation. To see the WCAG 2.0 recommendation, visit w3.org slash tr slash WCAG 2.0. In 1998, the United States Congress amended the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 to include Section 508, which you can check out at section508.gov. And Section 508 requires federal agencies to make electronic information accessible to people with disabilities. The portions regarding web technology are based on the guidelines developed by the Web Accessibility Initiative of the W3C, and this is also the case for laws and regulations around the world. In the UK, for instance, the Publicly Available Specification, or PAS 78, published in 2006 also references the WAI guidelines. This is also true in Canada, Spain, Japan, and many other countries, but even so, you should study the laws that are local to your country and strive to comply with them. 
Hopefully this video helped you to understand the scope of accessibility. In the next video, we'll look at ways to improve accessibility for users with visual impairments. Thank you.